All right, guys, today we're going to be reacting to why Germans are extremely misrepresented in history. This is from the great Thomas Sowell, American icon. He's very good. <laughs> He's very good. That's all I'm going to say. Make sure you like and subscribe. Let's A number of cultural stuff. characteristics have recurred or persisted for generations or even centuries among Germans, whether living in their homeland or in highly disparate societies around the world. The capacity of Germans for hard, thorough, unrelenting work has been noted in Germany itself, as well as in colonial America, Tsarist Russia, Honduras, Australia, Brazil, Ireland, Argentina, and Paraguay. A counterpoint to this zeal for work has been an apathy about politics, which has long been endemic in Germany itself and in the German states and principalities that preceded it, as well as among German communities overseas. Along with this political apathy has gone a great deference to authorities, expressed in many ways, not only in Germany, but also in other lands where Germans have loyally served their adopted countries, even in wars against their ancestral homeland. Exceptions have occurred in countries which actively pursued anti-German policies internally, notably in such Eastern European nations as the Soviet Union and Czechoslovakia. Both the strong German military tradition and anti-military tradition have deep roots in Germany and have followed Germans around the world. Mm. The German respect for education is likewise a centuries-old phenomenon in Germany, which pioneered in modern educational developments from the kindergarten to the university. German emigrants have made education an important priority, even in countries where those around them have remained uneducated and unconcerned about education. Interesting. Loyalty to the German language and culture, while living in other countries, has seldom meant loyalty to the German government. Huh. However, both Imperial Germany and the Third Reich attempted to manipulate Germans living in foreign countries for national political advantage, and usually to the detriment of those German communities. Often the cultures to which Germans remained loyal were regional or local cultures, so that Palatine communities were recreated in upstate New York, or Silesian villages in parts of Australia, or Volga or Black Sea communities when Germans from Russia resettled in the Western Hemisphere. That is so interesting. Huh. Interesting. Even though they have a very strong culture, right, very strong culture, they still have more loyalty to the local communities. The local and regional nature of these cultures was exemplified in the local and regional dialects spoken by immigrants from different areas. The various regional dialects of German spoken in the many enclaves in the United States, for example, not only differed from one another, but sometimes persisted after such dialects had begun to die out in Germany itself. Moreover, German communities consisting of people who immigrated from countries outside the Reich tended to speak not only a particular dialect derived from their regional ancestral speech in Germany, but also words and expressions from the Romanian, Hungarian, Russian, or Ukrainian languages in the respective countries from which they immigrated to the United States, Canada, or elsewhere. In short, German cultural persistence overseas was generally more a matter of clinging to the familiar rather than political nationalism. Where German community solidarity did take a political form, such as support for Germany during the two world wars, the backlash which this provoked in the surrounding societies often ranged from social ostracism to economic blacklisting, repressive laws, internment, mob violence, and in Eastern Europe after the Second World War, mass expulsions. The dozen years of Germany's history dominated by the Nazis cast a long shadow over Germans at home and that, abroad. That's a good point. Something happened during the first half of the, the 20th century. Forget about everything that they've done. You see what I'm saying? Like, odd. For decades, everybody makes Hitler mistakes. Regime was buried in the dust and rubble at the end of World War II. While the Nazi movement exploited certain features of German culture, including obedience to authority and a romanticizing of power and violence, in other ways, the Nazis represented a sharp break with the more civilized aspects of German tradition. For example, the racial fanaticism of the Nazi era in Germany was in sharp contrast with the historic, tolerant cosmopolitanism of Germans in the Baltic and Czechoslovakia or the German anti-slavery position in Brazil and the United States, their ability to get along with the indigenous American Indians in the Western Hemisphere, 
their charitable efforts toward the Aborigines in Australia, and the widespread acceptance, including intermarriage, of Jews in pre-Hitler Germany. Interesting. Group prejudice and discrimination were by no means unknown among Germans, at home or abroad, but it tended to be less rather than more prevalent as compared to other Europeans, or to Asians or Africans, for mm -hmm. that matter. The economic achievements of Germans were fundamental to the rise of Germany as a world power and to the agricultural and industrial progress. Farms here in the United States, mostly, uh, still, still up to this date, owned by Germans. Progress of other nations with substantial contingents of German they're, immigrants. They're willing to get their hands dirty. The outstanding records of the Germans in family farming around the world in the 18th and 19th centuries was matched by their later achievements in science and technology. Yeah. Even the particular industries in which they have historically been outstanding pioneers, brewing, optics, pianos, and industrial manufacturing, for example, have been reproduced among Germans in widely scattered countries. While Germans abroad have been notable for their loyalty to the respective countries in which they settled, they have nevertheless suffered from Germany's actions in two world wars. Mm -hmm. The First World War led to the suppression of the German language and culture in the Western Hemisphere and Australia, while World War II brought the mass deportation of Germans from the European to the Asiatic regions of the USSR. Damn. The atrocities committed by the Nazis during their occupation of Eastern Europe and the Balkans came back to haunt the ethnic Germans of that region. Post-war realignments of borders were accompanied by expulsions of 15 million ethnic Germans, many of whom had family roots going back for centuries in Poland, Hungary, the Sudetenland of Czechoslovakia, and other parts of Eastern Europe, as well as in eastern regions of Germany, which now became part of... Germany is a very interesting country, man. And it's not the country, let me just emphasize this, the people. It's very interesting. Of Poland, the people. as eastern portions of Poland became part of the Soviet Union. The embittered peoples of the region, who had suffered from the Nazi occupation, with which local ethnic Germans often collaborated, now took their revenge on Germans in general, with atrocities that contributed to the deaths of two million of these German expellees. Winston Churchill, whose opposition to the Nazi regime began long before the war began, nevertheless spoke of mass expulsions of millions of Germans on a scale grievous and undreamed of, and said, we must banish revenge against an entire race from our minds. Mm. The horrors of Hitler and the Nazis continued to be associated with Germany and with Germans long after World War II, reducing the world influence of the economically vibrant West German nation even after the passing decades produced a German population largely born since the end of the Nazi era, including increasingly people whose parents had not yet been born at the time of Hitler. Hmm. However, decades of peaceful coexistence and the development of democratic traditions in West Germany eventually allayed the fears of surrounding nations sufficiently to lead to widespread international acceptance of a reunited Germany in 1990. In the long view of history, Few peoples have made such cultural and economic contributions to so many lands in so many parts of the planet as the Germans. I mean, yeah, a lot of things have been contributed by the the, um, the Germans, right? <clears throat> I think we have to just be... Uh, uh, something I notice about a lot of cultures, man, a lot of people, they're very ungrateful. Very ungrateful. Very ungrateful, and they, we don't want to admit the reality of things. We just want to simply just brush it under the rug, like we don't need to, right? No, that's that's not the way to go. The way to go. A lot of Germans they settle, and they make those places nice and clean and organized. So, and school and academics they go up quick. Let me know what you guys see in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one.